Hello and welcome to Exotic Gardening UK, your to Chris Weekly. And on this week's episode, we're going to be looking at the lighting and heating setup in my greenhouse. So I'm going to show you around the greenhouse or my grow space because it's not a conventional greenhouse and look at the lighting setup and the heating setup over winter and talk about why I've gone for this setup and some alternatives you may want to use if you have a different type of greenhouse. So a little bit about me if you've not watched my videos before I live in the north of England and I grow exotic looking plants many of which stay in the ground all year round but there are some that do need to be overwintered in this greenhouse where it's frost free and depending on what sort of plants you grow you might want to heat your greenhouse or parts of your greenhouse to different temperatures and I'll talk about that in this video. So this greenhouse or grow space which used to be a garage that I've converted into a greenhouse last year I've employed different sort of heating and lighting ideas around to keep it a consistent temperature but to have different temperatures potentially in different areas for different plants. So I'm going to do a little tour because I've emptied out the greenhouse now so we can actually see the wiring and the lighting and the heating so you get a better idea of how it all works. So we'll start at the beginning that is the power source to my greenhouse and I have a fuse board here with the different circuits marked on. So we've got a garden supply which is for the pump for the waterfall outside and the lights outside, lighting for the greenhouse and sockets for the greenhouse and these can be isolated as well if you need to do any work on here. And that goes into the house through a, a main cable there, almond cable, and this supplies all the power to my greenhouse and I have a separate switch for everything that goes out of the greenhouse, the garden supply, and then different cables go off in different directions for my circuits. So the main heating for the greenhouse is a great big fan heater. So I'll just show you that now. So this is my BioGreen heater and it has various settings and I've basically put it up here so that it can blow hot air or warm air around this space with a great big fan and a heating element and it'll warm the whole space and it means I can walk under it, I can't splash water on it and I've got more space to use in the greenhouse because you can have it on the floor which does have some benefits because heat does rise and you get a better circulation if you have it on the floor but if you have it on the roof like this I found then the heat obviously goes forward it sort of hits the roof, bounces around and it will go down as well and circulate through and can keep a nice consistent temperature through most of this area. Obviously the bigger the space I need a bigger heater or more powerful fan with a heater to get the air blown about. And this also has various settings, you can set the fan on or the heating at 1 kilowatt, 1.8 kilowatts, 2.8 kilowatts. So the bigger the space, the more energy, the more heat you need to keep your space frost free or to a higher temperature. You can keep it up to 35 degrees if you really wish and it's not too cold outside. Now this I have decided to put on a separate um, thermostat and that is because a separate electronic thermostat is far more accurate and on that thermostat it has a heat probe, so you can, a temperature probe, so you can actually see what the temperature is and then it will decide whether to hit the temperature on or off uh, to whatever temperature you've set it is on your thermostat. So if I wanted to keep this frost free I would set my thermostat to 4 or 5 degrees. When it gets to that temperature the thermostat would turn on the heater and it would heat the space. I'll just show you a closer look at the actual thermostat so we can see that better. If we have a look at the thermostat, this is connected by this wire going up to the big biogreen heater and then into a plug socket down here so that's always powered on. And then we've also got this temperature probe here and this is put somewhere away from the fan heater 
and in my case because the fan heat is above I want this much lower down this will measure the temperature at that point so you want to put this at a cooler spot sort of average spot away from your heater so that it gets an accurate representation of the the temperature in your greenhouse if you put this high up or put it in front of the fan heater then what it'll do is it'll think it's really hot all the time because the fan only needs to be on for a couple of seconds to heat this up and it'll cut out and it'll think that it's nice and warm in your greenhouse but it won't be the rest of the greenhouse will be probably freezing because it's not been on the fan heater long enough to heat that space so you want to put your probe somewhere away from the heat source where it's where the plants are and it's going to be cooler so that the heater stays on for longer so that the temperature won't drop too low away from where the heater is hope that makes sense so if we just move around I'll show you other heating elements I've got so if we just go down here you can see I've got a tubular heater this is electric as well has its little thermostat on the right hand side and this is a I think it's a 1.5 meter long tubular heater and I've got one on this wall and if we go around we've got one behind that staging over there so the tubular heater here pumps out enough energy just to warm this space and it's very sort of hot to the touch so you don't want foliage touching it but it's safe enough to have plants near it and it's not emitting so much dry heat because there's no fan involved so it doesn't sort of dry out plants too quickly but it does stop condensation forming on the walls so there won't be a build up of moisture which can cause rot in winter when there's lots of plants near it and it just gets to those cold spots so the walls here are the cooler space compared to the middle and the roof because of the fan heater obviously heating the main space in the greenhouse but it's hard to get to the areas to maintain a consistent temperature behind lots of plants because soon all this area in front will be lots of plants for over winter so I've got a couple of tubular heaters and I've also got a couple of other heating ideas for the greenhouse which I'll show you now here I have my great big Vitapod propagator and this can actually work on its own without the need for fan heaters if you just want to overwinter plants that need a bit of warmth and not too big because how it works is it's basically a mini heated greenhouse in its own right the full base of this has a heating element in and again it's controlled by a thermostat so you can set the temperature to whatever you like within reason and it will maintain that temperature within sort of a degree or so and by having these sections of plastic here and vents you can build it up and effectively it's like a greenhouse keeping that warm thin so i use this obviously for propagating obviously in spring seedlings and things like that but over winter i put my most tenderest plants in here because the thermostat and the heater combined will keep the temperature in here about 12 15 degrees warmer than the air temperature so if I kept the greenhouse to 8, 10 degrees, I can keep the temperature in here to over 20 degrees if plants need it that warm. Obviously, I can turn it down if required as well. So this is a great piece of kit if you don't want to heat a full greenhouse, but you've got some tender plants that are not too big, is using a propagator or you can use a heat bench or a heat mat as well and it will do the same sort of thing because plants will survive as long as the roots are warm on tender plants the air temperature doesn't need to be as warm as the soil and the roots the air temperature providing it's you know above freezing plants can cope with it if they're on the sort of tender or tropical side in a lot of cases the other thing combined with this that's important to think about is light so I put this in an area near east facing windows there so it's the morning sun obviously it gets sun from above as well and it's not full sun in winter 
um, in the middle of the day because I've got these walls and some don't quite reach this propagator. But you can add lights over this as well if you're trying to actively grow plants or keep sort of fussy plants alive. So that's another way to overwinter plants where they need heat basically to get through. And if you don't want to heat a full greenhouse, a propagator is a great piece of kit. I've got a final way that I heat my greenhouse and that's over here. Just turn the camera around. So you probably can't see what it is yet, but if I just go down here, you can see I've got a couple of plants to show you, but this will be full of a winter. This area at the back of the greenhouse is a great big sandbox with a heating element in it, which keeps the plants that are in this area of a winter nice and frost free at least and quite warm in some cases so i'll do a link at the top there and in the description below of how i made this heat box and again this is a great way to overwinter plants without spending lots of money on a big fan heater because this i mean this is a big one this is a 25 meter heating element in here uh, it's like coil drowned and this is I think it's about about 300 watts of energy when it's on again you can put a thermostat on this to control the exact temperature of the sand and of the plants in here but this is far cheaper than having a two or three kilowatt heater blasting out all the time which you don't need for all the plants but I've liked to do this for propagating it's great in spring for bringing on cuttings and things like that. But also over winter, I can put some of my banana plants in this area as well. And it only needs to be on for a little bit of the night and a bit of the day, just to keep it so it's not too cold in there. Because again, this is at the far end of the greenhouse. So it's away from the main fan heater. So it's gonna be a little bit cooler at this end without additional heat, but with this, base heat, keeping the soil nice and warm, it gets the plants through without being overly expensive. So I'll just run through the heating costs as well. So heating a greenhouse is basically expensive. I've gone down the electric route because there's no fumes or anything like that. You could have a gas heater, you could use candles. Some people have tried to use like a, a sort of just using water as well as a heat store in the day and then releasing heat at night to keep it frost free. That has its drawbacks because you've got a great big vat of water that you've got to use and then you don't have much space for actually using the greenhouse. Um, candles, obviously, you've got to keep changing them. They're a little bit of a fire risk and they don't emit that much heat unless you've got lots in. And gas, again, you've got a big canister of gas to store in your greenhouse and you've got to make sure you vent it correctly, otherwise you'll get carbon monoxide buildup, and I think you'll get some condensation as well and moisture. But with electric, it's a, a dry heat, so you've got no fumes, and you've also got um, no issues with mold or anything like that, because the heat from there will blow around and sort of dry out things, which is good in winter for most, for most plants, not all plants. So the cost of electricity is far more than gas generally, but it's more controllable electricity because you have thermostats set it on and off when needed. At the moment, I think electricity costs about 16 to 18 pence per kilowatt hour. So if a two kilowatt heater was on for one hour, then that's uh, 17 times two, 34 pence an hour. So what's that, it's quite, quite, you know, seven or eight quid a day. So you're looking at 55, 60 pounds a week if it was on all the time. But obviously with thermostats and not setting it at crazy high temperatures, then it's gonna be much, much lower than that. But at the absolute extreme end, if you just left your heater on, you're looking at like 60 pounds worth of electricity costs as it is in 2021 in the UK with most suppliers. Obviously you can have the, uh, what's it, the super seven hour cheaper rate uh, tariffs as well which would bring it down a lot but yeah there's lots of other things to think about when you use electricity but generally speaking yeah so that's the extreme end most heaters will only go on for a few seconds to a few minutes per hour 
if you are a decently insulated greenhouse. Now I'm going to do lots of different videos about greenhouse growing, but I'll just touch on a few things. Obviously insulation, I've got bubble wrap, I've got polycarbonate, I've got brick walls in here. I've got some also um, insulation as well underneath propagators to stop heat being lost to the ground and things like that. And same with my sandbox behind as well. So it's pretty well insulated in here. So we're not just paying for energy just to go out. We're keeping the energy, the heat in the greenhouse. The tubular heaters, are, depending on how long they are, can be up to 190 watts when they're on. But again, with the thermostat, they're not on all the time. The box behind, again, depending on how long your cable is. This is probably one extreme end at 24, 25 meters. I think it's about 300 watts. So it's quite a lot of money if that's on all the time. But again, we have a thermostat, the costs are down. And lighting, depending on what lighting you've got, if you go for LED lighting, then it's a lot cheaper than the old halogen lighting and incandescent lighting. I've got some old fluorescent tubes that are just basically so I can see in here at night. But I do have, I've used a little grow light like this with little LEDs at red and blue. And I think this one, yeah, this is a 60 watt, but that gives out a lot of light. And I've also got behind this Mars Hydro light, and this can be set at different brightnesses, and that can go up to 300 watts if that was on full set. That will actually produce quite a bit of heat as well, so I'll add to the heating in here. In fact, if I just turn that on, you can see, even in daylight, that's pretty bright light, it's like sunlight. I'll just turn that down. So yeah, if you heat in a big space, it's gonna cost a lot of money. If you heat in a small space, it's gonna cost a lot less. Obviously, depending on what plants you grow, you need different sort of heating environments for different plants. For the most tolerant plants, you can leave them outside. For the ones that you need to bring in that just need to be frost free, you might get away with tubular heaters rather than even having a fan heater, using heat mats as well. And you can also divide your greenhouse. I haven't done that here, but I could put up a curtain using bubble wrap or actually physically divide it with different panes of either glass or polycarbonate and heat one section and not eat others. And a little bit of heat will travel through, so you could probably keep it all frost free, but you could have an area for plus 10 degrees, you could have one for plus 5 degrees, you could have one for like plus 15 degrees for the more tenderest plants. And that way you're saving costs rather than heating the whole space to a minimum of 15 degrees. So there's lots of different things you can do to overwinter plants and heat them in different ways talked about my setup here because I overwinter a huge range of plants. Most of them I want to keep just ticking over. I don't want them actually growing over winter because they get too big, the bugs get attracted to them and I want them basically just to stay sort of semi-dormant where possible. So things like cannas, they go under the benches without any water or light and they can just stay down there till spring. My bananas, like I said, go at the back with a bit of light from the windows, etc. And they'll just sort of stay the same sort of size until spring when the light levels increase. Propagators are a bit different. I have my tenderest sort of cuttings in there, so I want them to root with the bottom heat to begin with. Then I want them to sort of slowly grow over winter, so I'll probably put a light over them. And the most tenderest plants will stay in the house. If I have some proper house plants that need at least 15 degrees, they go in the house. Because I keep my greenhouse to 10 degrees most of the time. If it's a little bit milder, I might stick it up to 11 or 12 degrees because it's not costing me any more money. If we get a really cold spell, it's freezing, and notice heating's on quite a lot of the time, then I'll probably knock it down to eight degrees because plants, most plants will be fine. You know, even the tender ones down to that temperature for a few days. So depending on what the outside temperature does dictate what I set thermostat to inside. But also if it's absolutely freezing outside, I can have all my heaters on full blast and it can't keep the temperature above say 19, 20 degrees anyway because there's not enough power from these heaters to do that. 
Obviously, if you're on a windy exposed site, you're going to be using more energy. It's going to be more expensive because the cold winds blow, literally blows heat off your greenhouse, replace it with more cold air. So you're trying to continually heat that space more and more. And if you're in a sun trap, so if you're in south facing area with nice house walls behind you, your heating costs will be much lower because you're getting all that solar energy when it's sunny in winter. You've got heat radiating from a house or a building next to you going into your greenhouse. So that'll lower your costs quite a lot as well. So unless you've got boundless amounts of cash, try to not heat everything all the time in a greenhouse over winter because it'll just get too expensive. Try to keep things alive but not actively growing unless you've got loads of really good lighting, specialist lighting that's for growing. And also think about when you want plants to get into growth in spring and where you're going to start propagating. Because if you fill your greenhouse over winter with everything you've dug up from your garden, you're going to have no space in spring for dividing the plants you brought in or propagating other plants if it's too cold outside to start moving plants out. So give a bit of space over winter so you can actually do that propagating in spring. So that's my setup here. I'll do more videos on greenhouse gardening throughout the year, but obviously I do lots of overwintering videos. I'll do some links above and below as well to those, and I'll continue doing videos like this every week. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Gardening UK. Join me next week where we'll be doing more in the garden.